to the Case IH Axle Flow 250 Series Combine Operation Guide. In this video we shall be looking at the header, its operation, access and maintenance. Unlatch the header from the trailer and then drive the combine slowly forward so that the feeder hookup plate is just below the header crossbar. Because the feeder will arc forward when it's raised, try only just to clear the beam. This will avoid damage to the guide plates. Raise the feeder slowly and hook up. Continue lifting and clear the trailer. Reverse the combine away from the trailer, then lower it down for easier access for latching. First mechanically latch the header, then the hydraulics, then pass the cable through the latch handle and make the connection. And finally attach the PTO shaft on the left and if required the right side of the feeder. Ensure that the mechanical latch is in the second notch. Adjust the latch bolts in the slotted hole as necessary. This means that the first notch now acts as a safety catch. Gently release and lower all the ground following skid plates and ensure that the hanging brackets are clipped up securely. Take a look at the check straps to ensure good order. It is good practice to calibrate the header between each crop type when you are ready to start combining, especially if you have added or removed equipment such as side knives or crop lifters. When you are ready, go to the calibration on the control screen and find the header. Carry out the exact instructions until finished. Calibration will take about 5 minutes. Please ensure that before any work is carried out on the header that the real safety latches are in place. Looking at the drive lines, the PTO drives via a factory set slip clutch to the side of the header. From here it drives the auger chain and knife drive belt. The knife drive is mirrored on the right side for the wide headers. The reel is driven by a hydraulic motor and a short drive chain on the right hand side of the header. Chains and belts should be checked and if required tensioned every day. Refer to the operator's manual for exact tensioning procedures. Chains should be lubricated at the end of each day when the chains are still warm, allowing the lubricant to soak into the links. There are various grease points on the header requiring grease every 50 hours. On each end of the reel, on the knife idler arm, on the PTO shaft and every 100 hours on the vertical knives where fitted. The wobble box needs an oil change after the first 50 hours. The support bolts of this and the knife arm need checking within the first 50 hours of use as there is a slight chance of them loosening at new. Regularly cast an eye down the length of the cutter head and check for alignment. If a finger is out of line, bend it back or if necessary change the finger. Bent fingers will cause excessive wear on the wobble box and drive line. There are three different fingers fitted to each header. Make sure you fit the correct one. Wearing heavy duty gloves, check the knife blade and finger clearance is between a half and one millimeter. Carefully try to lift the blade up and down in its finger. There should be slight movement. Tighten the retaining spring clips accordingly. Knife sections can be easily changed by undoing the two nuts and bolts and replacing the broken section. Spare sections are located on the inside of the left guard and a complete new knife is located in the lower beam behind the protection plate. Check the full length of the auger for any bent or damaged flights and straighten as necessary. Also check for any broken, missing or bent retracting tines which should be replaced without delay to avoid further damage to the auger. Missing tines are likely to be found rolling loosely inside the auger where they have broken off. Through the inspection hatches remove any loose tines and replace bent or broken tines. Release the tine from its mount by removing the R-clip and pulling the stub. Put in a new tine and replace the R-clip. The auger comes with two pairs of extensions. One pair must be fitted at all times as these extend the flight to bring the crop into line with the feed elevator. The second pair should be used for low density crops to ensure a more even feeder material between the auger and feeder. Adjust the reel rams to allow the reel tines to go four inches below the knife when out in front of it. As you bring the reel back it automatically raises over the knife to avoid bringing tines into the blades. That the left guard can freely move in and out of unison with the extending knife and that both guard latches are in good working order. 
Always remember that more comprehensive information including adjustment procedures and lubrication specifications can be found in the operator's manual which should be read prior to harvest operations, maintenance and repairs. Thank you for watching and have a great season. <laughs>